In this video, we're going to be talking about hydrostatic head. And the timing of this video is perfect because we're getting ready to test wind shirts. And with wind shirts, you need to test both air permeability, which you've seen our air permeability test before, along with water resistance because they have to strike a fine balance between those two. So we're going to be talking about what hydrostatic head is, how it's tested, and then we'll get into the debate on whether it's meaningful or valid. So right off the bat, hydrostatic head, it's a simple measurement in the outdoor industry to test the water proof or water resistance of fabric. And the test is conducted by taking a cylinder of water and placing it above the fabric in a watertight seal and then adding water which increases the pressure that the water exerts on the fabric until that fabric starts to leak. So we built a contraption here that's going to show you two jackets at a time so we can compare the water resistance between those two jackets. As you increase the diameter of the column of water, that column of water is acting upon a larger surface area. So if you have a constant volume of water, by increasing the diameter of the column of water, the height of the column of water is going to go down. And so the pressure that it applies to any given portion of that fabric also decreases. So the way the math works out is that you can increase the diameter of the, of the column of water and as long as you bring the water level, the column of water, up to the same height or keep that constant, your pressures will be constant. So in the industry, they like to test with about a one inch diameter column, but that's not really specific. You don't want to go too large because then you're getting into forces like uh, the, the tear strength of the fabric because you're applying the pressure across such a wide area. So, but this is a nice test that we put together here. The diameters are the same in terms of the pressure being uh, exerted on the two different jackets or tent flies or tent floors that are being tested. Uh, so let's talk about, is it a valid test? Well, to me, the validity of a test comes down to, can the test be repeated with consistent results? So, you know, it also covers things like, how stringently are you controlling your input variables? A water column test, like a hydrostatic head, is a pretty easy test to get consistent results with because the force of gravity is a constant as well as the density of water is a constant. So as long as you're keeping your, your height of water consistent and your you know, openings or diameter of the columns are consistent, you can easily see which of two jackets are more water resistant or which of two fabrics, I should say, are more water resistant. The debate comes down to whether it is a meaningful test. And I think where people get confused on that is they're trying to make assumptions that hydrostatic head tests more than it actually does. All it does is test two fabrics or test any fabric to see at what point it starts to leak water. It does not take into consideration the durability of the fabric. We know that some fabrics like Cuban fiber and Spinnaker do not hold up well over time where they're folded they develop little pin pricks or, or holes over time. Each time you fold them or crease them, you are starting to break down the fabric's water resistance in that area. Hydrostatic head doesn't address that. So you have to uh, you know, speak with someone who's got experience with this over you know, several years of working with these fabrics and knowing how they hold up over time. So you know, when, you, when you see hydrostatic head, just realize that it's a specific test and isn't broadly applied. It also doesn't cover things like the duration of the water resistance. Some companies or some brands like to say we want to support let's say a thousand millimeter hydrostatic head for 24 hours but other companies might say we only need to support that column of water for one minute and it's considered valid. Now in experimenting with wind shirts we came across this where something with a particular wind shirt would support a hydrostatic head you know right off the bat but you come back 10 minutes later and it's starting to drip through so once again hydrostatic head does not address that hydrostatic head does also not address the rate that the water goes through the fabric once it starts to leak you know it doesn't just come gushing through or maybe it does we haven't seen that yet but it starts to gradually work its way through some fabrics, even though they're leaking, the water 
transfers through that fabric slower than other fabrics. So once again, hydrostatic head doesn't address that. But when we do our performance tests between jackets, we'll be looking at that. And lastly, hydrostatic head doesn't address mechanical forces applied to the fabric. This is of particular importance with things like tent floors, where there's mechanical forces of you walking on the tent floor, laying on the tent floor, rolling around in your sleeping bag on the tent floor, and the tent floor is, you know, can be sitting in a puddle of water. So what is waterproof for a tent floor is going to be different than what is considered waterproof for a tent fly. Typically you'll find that tent floors support a much higher hydrostatic head than tent flies. Same thing with jackets. In a jacket there are mechanical forces that may be applied. You've got the various parts of the jacket that could be rubbing up against each other. The, the sleeve surface fabric could be rubbing up against the body surface, surface fabric and applying forces to help try and push that water through the fabric. Uh, also with jackets, if you fall in the snow, well there's that mechanical force or you fall in a puddle, there's the mechanical force applied you know, when you hit the water or when you brush up against a, a tree when you're skiing, etc. Hydrostatic head doesn't address those mechanical forces, but we'll talk about that when we do the individual performance test. So keep in mind that on these hydrostatic head tests, the column of water can get you know, two, three, four, ten meters high in some cases. So, um, you know, at some point there's diminishing returns for the way that we're going to test it here, but you'll find that the test is really meaningful when we start looking at wind shirts. So stay tuned for those videos. We'll get them out as fast as we can. In the meantime, if you have any questions on hydrostatic head, feel free to give us a call at 406-582-0508 or send us an email to info at Thanks for watching.